and in the middle of her video, her stomach started bleeding. They are now freezing people to bring them back to life at a cost of $200,000. Looks like he is creating a tornado and controlling it. A demon found floating outside of someone's house late at night. A monkey statue in Texas that has a dark meaning behind it, and possibly the Leviathan causing a disturbance near the Arctic ice wall. In today's episode, we're going to be reacting to some of the creepiest videos that'll keep you up all night long. Let's get into it. This doll is so dangerous, it is literally locked in a box. You thought Annabelle was bad, she has nothing on bro. He is one of, if not the most infamous dolls in the entire world, and the story will absolutely terrify you. In 1904, this young boy, Robert Eugene Otto, received the doll, Robert, for his birthday. Now, he was just a normal doll, nothing was happening until it did. The young boy started coming out with strange remarks and doing really weird things that he would not normally do and saying to his parents, well, Robert made me do it. Robert told me to do it. He was getting in trouble every single day. He was getting in fights. He was being rude to his parents and just blaming it all on this doll. Until one day, the boy was at home screaming. His parents ran in and Robert was on top of him with a mmm. So after this, they got rid of this doll and he is now in a museum in the Florida Keys. This is Fort East Martello Museum in Key West in Florida. Now, a couple years ago, I actually went here and visited this, and genuinely, I've never experienced anything like it. I'm talking, there are grown men in here who are outside going, oh, I'm just going to take a load of photos of him, blah, blah, blah. And let me tell you, when we got in there, all of these big tough guys who were giving it all that outside, no one said a flipping word. Now, if you want to take photos of the doll, you're meant to ask for his permission. If you don't, bad things can happen. Obviously, I did not take any photos, because no thanks. And like I say, not a single person in the room did. Now, what happens if you don't? Well, take a look here. These are letters which hundreds of people have written to Robert, literally apologising for not asking for his permission, when tons of bad things have happened after doing it. And there is literally a warning on the box saying, make sure you ask for his permission before taking a photo, because, you know, stuff's gonna happen. Now, I didn't take a photo, but the next day after this, no word of a lie, we went on a jet ski tour, we got stuck in the middle of a storm, genuinely could have died, the jet ski flipped in waters full of sharks, and it was terrifying. So, I mean, whatever this flipping bloke did. Nah. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts on this doll. Is it real or is it all just a mystery? Why do you keep the doll and send it somewhere else? I would just burn it and get rid of it or throw it away or do something that would destroy the doll. I don't think that I would want it just locked up in some museum or maybe that is the better way of doing it because now it cannot harm someone else because it's behind glass. But if what this video is saying is true, it can still technically harm people by being around it and not asking for its photo first. So apparently my town has a bunch of fucking vampires running around in it and I didn't fucking know it. So Netflix, I guess, is here doing some documentary about all these vampires we have running around Dayton, Ohio. Who knew? This reminds me of that show True Blood. Do you remember that show? Like, I wonder how many times I've been in a restaurant downtown or something and, like, have a vampire next to me and not know it. Or been in a gas station, like, buying shit or getting gas and there's, like, vampire beside me. Like, what's up? And I didn't even know. And this is the wild part. I guess this documentary is going to be called Vampires of Gym City, which I didn't know that Dayton was called that either. Oops. But it says Dayton has been home to the largest coven of vampires outside of New Orleans. First off, I didn't know vampires had covens. I just thought that was witches, but... Interesting fact. And I've never seen a vampire in New Orleans. I have been to New Orleans. That's a pretty colorful place. It wouldn't surprise me at all. But in Dayton, in my backyard? I don't know when this stuff's supposed to air, but I'm like interested as fuck to see it. I do not even have Netflix anymore, so I didn't know that this show was a thing. But for the people that are in Ohio, have you heard about this? Are you aware of these vampire covens? I remember as a kid seeing on TV that there was people that would go out to the clubs that were dressed as vampires, you know, where they would have like the fake vampire fangs in and they would drink animal blood. That was really weird to people back in the day. And it's just crazy to me to see how far it's progressed. Y'all, this video is crazy, okay? It was captured in New Orleans and it seemingly shows a man with superpowers. Just pay attention to this guy walking up right here. Obviously, this is security footage from a skate park, and everybody in the park is running away while this guy is casually walking up. It seems like there are a lot of large gusts of wind, there's stuff blowing everywhere, but watch right here. The man stops, and it looks like he is creating a tornado. 
and controlling it. Watch. He moves his arms around certain areas and it looks like it blows in that direction. Now this could just be a really strange coincidence, but a lot of people are convinced that this man just created a tornado. That he has some sort of weather manipulation psychic ability. I zoomed it in so you can see it better. I just... I have no idea what just happened. It is... It's crazy. The way he walks up so calm, too, is just weird. I personally think that that was just a guy that got caught up in a dirt devil, a really nasty one. That was just perfect timing, or really bad timing, depending on how you look at it. Are they, in fact, animal, or are they, in fact, a human race? And as time goes on, more and more ancient scholars started agreeing that they were, in fact, a human race that was just a hybrid, uh, what, what they refer to as a, a monstrous race. And so my argument is that I don't actually even consider Dogman a cryptid creature anymore. I consider it a cryptid race because for so long people have actually said, no, these are people. They just have the head of a dog, <laughs> which makes things interesting. The monstrous races was actually a, a phrase. It was a concept that was discussed and debated for hundreds of years, roughly a thousand years, actually. Throughout the entire medieval period, we had people like St. Augustine and Ratchinus of Corby and all of these, you know, Catholic ecclesiastical scholars debating not even the existence as much as, you know, can they be saved by Jesus or not? You know, back in the day, people probably depicted people as a certain type of beast. Maybe these people were really aggressive, very savage. Or maybe they even decorated themselves with wolves or dog-like memorabilia to make themselves seem like a dog. I really just have a hard time believing that there were animal hybrid people out there and there's not any today. It would be a really interesting time, or a normal time depending, if we still had animal hybrid people to this day. And I just find it really weird that we don't. Do you guys believe that animal hybrids were a real thing back in the past? Or do you think that maybe they were just depicted as animal type species for specific reasons, but they were just actual humans? Hey there, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And for everyone that's watching and or subscribed, thank you so much for watching and thank you for being subscribed. Okay, so check it out, guys. I got a friend that emailed me this, and he claims this is real. He says he goes outside, he looks, and he says he's astonished. He's so amazed. He's not even scared. I'm like, uh, I can see that because you sure were still with the camera. Tell me, what do you think? Is he lying? Because he just looks like some little goofy shit that was added to a video, but... The person that emails it says it's real. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys to decide on this. He said, man, if you don't believe it, watch the eyes. So I'm watching the eyes. I'm checking it out. So. Strange in the least, I must say. Let's watch it one more time. Honestly, the reason why I lingered on that video as long as I did is because of the comments. It's really, to me, I think this is 100% a fake video. Actually watching it and looking at it, this is definitely fake. I'm not even going to give it any kind of credit as being real. But reading some of these comments on this video is really concerning that there's a lot of people that believe that that could potentially be a real thing. Maybe my eyes are deceiving me, but I see so much pixelation around it, so many artifacts. Let me know in the comments, am I wrong on this? Does this look real to you? Is it real? Let me know because I do not think it is. Have you ever heard of the Castrato Men? What? Castrato Men. Yeah. I've never heard of the Castrato Men. But it was basically a very, very early practice, like 1700s, 1800s. This practice where boys that could sing really good, at a young age, they would, you know, snip, snip. Yeah. Before yep. puberty, so they would keep that same high tone, yeah, high tone, and they like banned it, obviously. Yeah. But the last castrato man, his name was Alessandro Moreschi, and he died in 1922. So this is him as a full-grown man, right? I mean, could you imagine signing up for that? Wow. Yeah. Jeez, man. And didn't, isn't that what happened to Michael Jackson? Didn't his dad do that to him? It was a chemical. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, he literally knew, like, what he was capable of. And, like, he was like, you know, we had to do, like, that's... You guys terrify me. Why? 
You guys just say the scariest stuff sometimes. I could have went my entire life not knowing that <laughs> that existed. Man, there's certain times in life where I'm glad things have changed. That's just barbaric. No matter how talented the kid is, you should not mutilate them just to preserve that talent. That's that's crazy to me. A, a lot of the content feels like it's not, it's not hitting the right emotions i don't know yeah like the, the nostalgic emotions yeah that and just the real emotions right like yeah. it doesn't it doesn't feel i don't know human mm. feel me like some shit doesn't feel human no more it doesn't the, do you think that the mr beast that shit doesn't, it doesn't feel human it doesn't feel human that shit doesn't, that's a great example that yeah. shit doesn't really feel except i will say the ones that are that are helping people's lives those yeah. ones are very human but do you think people using hospitality for views is good i think it yeah i think it's still good but it's like uh it depends if off camera you're still doing it mm, like if I you're see. only doing it for the camera then that's when it gets fucked but it's like say oh giving a thousand dollars to the homeless yeah it's cool but it's like you can do that without it but off camera are you still donating true true you know what i mean very interesting topic on that one. I have mixed feelings. I see it all of the time on TikTok where people go up to homeless people or people in need and film them while they're giving them money, food, or treating them. And that is an incredibly nice thing to do to someone that really needs the help or a whole organization that needs to help. But it is kind of weird in the aspect of you're doing it for the video. But there's a a balance to it that makes it hard to question one you're able to do what you're doing to these homeless people and for people in need because of the video because that video is getting views and you're getting paid for it you can afford to be extremely gracious now i'm not saying that these people are handing homeless people just a couple of dollars here and there when the cameras are off because i highly doubt that they're doing that and that's the normal thing to do not everyone can just give a homeless person a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars to support a homeless shelter or for anyone in need in that case but because you're doing it on video the video goes viral you get paid fairly decent money you can do it so it, it's it's a really it's a nasty thing that's good and bad it's really hard to explain let me know what you guys think about this how do you feel about people on social media helping people and i use quotations on helping people in need but filming the process and and things like that i don't like it but i understand it and i don't think it's a bad thing because someone's getting help out of it but at the end of the day are you a decent person or are you just doing this because it is something that gets you money and it just keeps getting you money and you're not even considering the nice act anymore now you're just seeing an opportunity to make more money what reality do we live in please tell me i'm not the only one seeing all these weird coincidences going on so just the other day, we had a 90-foot statue of a Hindu monkey man god put up in Texas. At the same time, we have this trailer for a new game coming out called Wukong, which is about a monkey man. All this coming out at the same time that we have monkey pox on the scene. So back to this statue, which is named State of the Union, is now the third tallest statue in the United States. The statue stands as a tribute to Lord Anuman's role in reuniting Siri, Rama, and Sita. The colossal figure is located at the Siri Askulaskmi Temple in Sugarland, Texas, and has now quickly become a focal point of global interest. So apparently, this statue is symbolizing the glory of Indian heritage and spiritual unity. I'll come back to this idea of spiritual unity in a second. But now let's look into this Hindu god Hanuman with the body of a man and the face of a monkey. Apparently, he is the god of courage, strength, and self-discipline and symbolizes the perfect Hindu who uses his abilities to help others. So now let's go over to Chinese mythology with Wukong, which this game is about a monkey man. And the name Wukong means awakened to emptiness. He is also known as the Monkey King. Now you may be asking, why am I bringing this up? And the reason why I find this all interesting is because when you look into the symbolism or meaning of a monkey in Hebrew, you will find this. In the Torah, God turned people into apes and demons as punishment for building the Tower of Babel, which symbolizes emptiness 
and vanity. So now what I find interesting is the idea of the Tower of Babel was humanity uniting, uniting against God with the king Nimrod. And what a coincidence on how this statue is symbolizing a spiritual unity with Wun Kong being this type of monkey king, kind of like Nimrod being a king and this idea of awakened to emptiness, which we see in the Hebrew, the idea of a monkey symbolizes emptiness and vanity. Again, I just find the timing of this all very coincidental, very interesting. Again, I don't know what to make of it, but we have this Hindu monkey man god statue put up, which symbolizes spiritual unity, symbolizes strength and courage. You have this Wun Kong game, which is a Chinese mythological character, which is half man, half monkey, the king, monkey king, which also symbolizes awareness to emptiness. And then you have the monkey symbolizing in Hebrew emptiness and God going and taking away the Tower of Babel. Again, so you have this symbolism of a monkey, the Tower of Babel, spiritual unity, emptiness and vanity. Yeah, again, all of this coming out when this has been in the news for the last couple of weeks. What this all means, I'm not really sure. When I say that people are catching more and more things on film, this is exactly what I mean. This witness was sitting in their car at a store waiting on their loved ones when they look over and in the car next to them, they see this person, but it doesn't look like a person. It makes you question, are we starting to see the supernatural world around us? Are we starting to really see reality for what it is? Or is this what scientists came out and dubbed the demon face syndrome in which the rare condition people can see demons and faces of other people? Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. I'm just going to go ahead and say that that's someone in their vehicle mean mugging it. <laughs> and even if it was the demon face syndrome, we would not be able to see that on camera. Not something that, oh, I see demon faces now. Now you can if I point my phone at it. Like what? This is everything that's happened today that you're not going to hear about anywhere else. NASA has apparently spotted a rogue object moving at 1 million miles an hour in space. Now, they're not fully sure what this is, so I will keep you posted on that. But they're saying apparently it's most likely a blown dwarf star. Oh, that sounds a bit sus. But if it is that, then this will be completely groundbreaking. A startup company in Germany, notice how I said startup, they are now freezing people to bring them back to life at a cost of $200,000. This is now the first company to do this in Europe. But yeah, I mean, would you pay 200 grand to turn into him? Now, you've probably seen a lot of this, but it is not good. The astronauts who went up to NASA over 70 days ago now are still stuck in space and are reportedly going to be there now until 2025. So yeah, not good. I'll give you all the updates you're not going to hear anywhere else every day, so hit that follow button. See you soon. Wow, I did not know that those astronauts are supposed to be up there until 2025. That's crazy to me. If there really is astronauts out there, up in space, stuck... I hope the best for them. Hopefully they make it back in one piece. I do not know. Northeast of Maryland. Found jellyfish in our freshwater pond. I have never, ever, ever heard of a freshwater jellyfish. I see a lot of people in the comments saying that they've never heard of freshwater jellyfish, but I also see a good bit of people saying that they have. Give me one second on this one. Okay, so I did a little research, and they actually are freshwater jellyfish. I'm not going to even try to pronounce the name, but I will pop up what they are right here. And they're cute little things. They're no bigger than a penny or a quarter. I just never heard of these or seen them before. So this is a new one to me. Well, I know we have a lot of scientists, meteorologists, and TikTok. I want to know what are these clouds sitting on, okay? Because when I ever put these videos out, I have so many experts coming out, this and this, this and that. What are these clouds sitting on? This is from a truck driver in Texas, y'all. These clouds look like they are sitting on top of something. Or something sitting on top of us? 
like an overlay a matrix over I've heard people say we're getting close to the dome this is why we're seeing these shadows in the sky as of late but do you see how low these clouds are and these clouds literally have been so low as of late has anybody else realized that it's like looking like it's like looking at the bottom of a ship while you're underwater y'all see that just the Im the imprint the imprint of the clouds now I don't care what nobody says these type of clouds that we are seeing now, I have never seen them when I was young. I mean, never in my life have I ever seen clouds to go fight and run and jump in front of the sun and block the sun. Those just look like regular clouds to me. Now, when mentioned, because I've never thought of that before, it does look like they are sitting on top of something. It looks like they're sitting on something with a flat surface. But I'm 100% sure those are just normal looking clouds. In fact, those are some of the most normal looking clouds compared to some of these radio wave looking clouds that I have outside my house. Remember this guy? The blob anomaly coming from Antarctica that's the size of Texas? I wondered which region of Antarctica did it come from in relation to the moon map? And from right here, the tip of South Africa. And if the warming land is going through cycles, like the clock in Prague depicts, then that is the exact region that would be melting. People were saying, the blob, it's the Leviathan. And look at this cool icy Leviathan I found. Some were saying, they released the Kraken. We all theorized that Ice Ages was the cover-up for the cycle that this map goes through. And it's funny that the most recent Ice Age we had was called the Quaternary. <laughs> As we exist in our new quarter of inhabitable land, whatever that blob was, it was creating 80-foot waves. Could it have been this thing? Could they be finding more than just mammoths in Antarctica's melting ice sheets? We already know they found this aquatic Quidditch ball with teeth under Antarctica's ice. And of course, the terrifying Yeti crab. Some even say megalodons have been found in those regions. I don't claim to know what the blob is, but it just so happens to be in the correct region. If ice were melting in Antarctica, exposing titan-sized monsters, all I know is tales of these beasts have existed since the beginning of time as we know it. They were said to have reigned thousands of years ago and will reign again here on this intelligently designed cycling earth. Take a look at this footage. This was captured by a couple of campers who believe they may have captured a juvenile Bigfoot on film. Now, it's completely up to you to decide if you think this is real or not, or if it's maybe one of their, play their friends in a costume playing a prank. What I would like to point out is the speed on how fast this thing moves and how quick this footage is. That's actually the credible part about all of this is that it's fast and it's quick. Bigfoot are known to be fast and silent and they're like a blur, which is where you get a lot of the cloaking theories and the invisible theories because to our eyesight, it looks like they literally blurred out of this dimension. It may just be natural speed. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. Now, I will have to say, that was a really fast but real looking object. And on my last video, someone brought up a really good point on the Sasquatch sightings, when it could be something that's real but not 100% sure what it was. People do like to collect or buy or steal exotic animals, like an orangutan, for example. That could have easily have been an orangutan just going on about its business. That's a really good theory, and I actually like that a lot. Now, I'm not saying that that is the case for this video, but it is a concept to keep in mind, depending on where they're at, depending on who they're around. There could be some really wealthy people that just decided, hey, I want an orangutan, I'm going to go buy one, and they got an orangutan, and it just is running loose now, and it's... That's what people are seeing and they think it's a Bigfoot. It's an interesting concept. I would have never have thought of that if someone did not bring that to my attention. Yeah. So there's this Chinese mukbanger. I don't know if you watch her, but it's not the person that eats a lot. Like, uh, you know how they ha mukbangers have food on the table and they only finish the food on the table? Yeah, yeah. This mukbanger does timed mukbangs. Like so what, she'll sit there. The speed? No, she'll sit there for six hours doing mukbangs. And how, how much is she eating? Fam, fam, a lot. And in the middle of her video, her stomach started bleeding. 
Oh, she shit. Yeah. Had to go to the hospital? Rushed to the hospital. And the, the nurse kind of did like what, what you did. Yeah. So it's like, um, yeah, they fixed it. They fixed it and stuff, which is very like, it was miraculous that they even fixed they that. They could fix it and just let her go? Yeah, and they let her go right and they said you have to stop doing videos and the parents were like yeah listen to the nurse stop doing the mukbang that's a livelihood video. bro that's yes a livelihood. You can't so just she off. she was like since this is my life i have to keep doing it mm. so the next week does a 10 hour mukbang live stream presses the record button sits there and eats dies on camera damn boo just her, just just because you want to keep doing it yes because her stomach finally ripped apart oh what the crazy and they did the autopsy fam her stomach had uneaten food so she was just swallowing stuff at one point so she was swallowing pizza full hamburgers yeah. not chewing shit ripped open damn she was just like vacuuming yeah. it bro. crazy wow rest in peace to that person if this story is true that is bizarre how can someone put that much food away like there's a limit to my body. Don't get me wrong. I love to eat and I can eat, but there's a limit. Once I reach that, that limit, if I put anything else in my system, it's going to come right back out. Like there's no way I could choke down that much food in that time span to the point where my stomach is literally busting open. That's crazy. Many ufologists have thrown around the theory of UFOs, UAPs, using clouds as cover, as a cloaking mechanism to hide in plain sight. We'll take a look at this footage that this woman captured. It truly does look like a UFO in the clouds. Is that what it could be? Or is it just a really circular shaped cloud? Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that is a UFO in the clouds, but the theory of UFOs utilizing clouds to hide in or to travel in, I like that theory a lot. And there is sometimes spontaneous storms that happen, like thunderstorms, where maybe an hour or two before the storms happen, it's a nice day. And then within that hour to two hours, the storm just comes around and there's just nasty clouds everywhere that's just popping off thunder and lightning. It makes me wonder sometimes if aliens are traveling in those storm clouds and that's what's creating the storms. And it doesn't have to be aliens either. It could be some kind of government machine doing that as well but it's something that runs up in the noodle every once in a while all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and end this video as always if you found any of these clips interesting links are in the description for each video we watch today and i would like to say i'm sorry that i have not been doing daily uploads right now i'm kind of stuck in this every other day upload process and that's kind of sucky i know but it's the only way I have to work right now because I'm just so busy at work and the time I get home it's just super late and it just nothing works with recording so for the people that are really expecting everyday uploads I'm really sorry I have not been able to do an every single day upload I want to get back into that groove though but as of where it sits now I can do an every other day upload so with that being said that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment with the hopes of being able to get back on track and doing an everyday upload. So I hope you don't mind too much on that. I know it's a pain and you probably are expecting an everyday upload and I'm really sorry about that. And with that being said, have a good day.